Today on Wrist Beards and Gear, we check out the Tone Hub amp plugin from STL Tones. For today's guitar player, the amount of choices that are available in plugin format for guitar tones is stunning and incredible, and it's never been a better time to be a guitar player. We'll enter STL Tones' Tone Hub plugin, which is kind of a, a new spin and is not in any way like any kind of amp sim plugin I have ever seen. Now, the plugin is called Tone Hub, and while I think the initial marketing and initial talk revolved around the fact that STL has taken all of its camper profiles and put them into a plugin, people were kind of assuming that you could just plug camper profiles into the Tone Hub plugin and you had a Kemper in a plugin format. And this is actually half true. Uh, STL have taken their uh, Kemper packs and they have converted them to the Tone Hub format using their tracing technology and their tracing amplifier, which is the center, the hub of the Tone Hub plugin. But you cannot just plug any Kemper profile you want into this plugin. This actually has nothing to do with a Kemper profiler per se, but rather the tracing technology captures the sonic snapshot of the actual setup, the, the microphone, the cab, and the amplifier setup that you would have in a studio. Now the main difference between the Tone Hub stuff and let's say a Kemper profiling amp is the tracing technology allows the EQ settings to behave like the amplifier that is being traced, that is being captured for the tone hub. So for example, a JCM 800, you will crank the bass and it won't flub out because there's not a ton of low end in a JCM 800. If it's a 5150, you're gonna back that bass off because a real life 5150 has a ton of low end. Now the problem with the Kemper, typically in my main gripe with the Kemper, is the EQ settings when moved from static don't behave and sound like the actual amplifier that was being profiled. STL Tones has solved this problem. Now, I'm gonna play you guys a mix that I've used STL Tone Hub in, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about it. But the short little rock tune sounds like this. <laughs> So I am in Logic, here is my mix, and I'm gonna bring up Tone Hub. And just to give you an overview of the plugin, I have the various packs on my left that I can scroll through. And if I click on a particular pack, uh, it will then sort through all of the presets up here in the main window uh, according to that pack. Um, so I have a stop section which is compressor, couple of overdrives. I have the amplifier section. This is the tracing amplifier that the entire plugin is built around. Um, I have my standard controls, gain, bass, middle, treble, presence, resonance, master, volume, sag, and bias controls. Next, I have the cabinet section. Now the cabinet section is very robust. Um, I can move the virtual mic around on the speaker I can actually mess with the angle, which is awesome. I can do an offset. I can do straight on, on axis. I can mess with the distance, resonance, high pass, low pass, etc., etc. After that, I have an EQ section. And then after that, I have any post effects that I might want to put on there, like delay or reverb. For the intro guitar that I clicked on, I wanted a pseudo AM radio sound. So I am using uh, Romesh's, um, let's see, where is it? Boop. I'm using his Bogner Ubershaw patch and I'm taking out a lot of uh, low end. Okay, so here's what it sounds like. There is no post-processing going on 
in the main bus. Um, I'm just using everything in the box. And the heavy lifting is being done in the EQ section with the high pass at 224 hertz, which I'm cutting everything below that, right? And then I'm trimming it a little bit with the high end of the low pass at 4.2K. So I'm really focusing in on that mid range. I want it to sound AM radio-ish, but not totally AM radio. Next, I have my main guitars. I'm gonna solo these. And this is the Chris Crummett Marshall JMP uh, preset 17. A lovely, lovely preset. The isolated guitars sound like this. I love the throatiness of, of that patch. It's, uh, there's a lot of mid-range going on. Um, the Overdrive 2 is being engaged. It's pretty aggressive. I like that. Um, I didn't really do much with the amplifier. I did turn down the bass and I did turn up the uh, presence a little bit and I turned down the treble a little bit. Cabinet, I didn't touch. I didn't feel the need to touch it. Um, it's basically right where the cap meets the cone. Uh, as far as EQ, uh, I don't think I did anything. I high shelved it a little bit, one and a half dB at uh, 6.9 K very, very minor to add some top end. And that's it. That's, that's the tone. Pretty cool. Now for the octave guitars, um, I went with the Ghost Inside 5153 blue channel. I didn't do anything to the patch. I honestly was just skip, just skipping through. There's so many presets. I just found the one that sat in the mix the best and I went with it, okay? There's no stops going on. Um, the stop section is off. The overdrive one is selected. I turned that off. The amp, I, I didn't do anything to. Cabinet, uh, I think I moved the uh, microphone out just a little bit to give some warmth. And with the EQ, again, I'm high passing at 165 to take away some of the any potential low end from the octaves because I don't want low end from my octaves uh, if it's like a melodic part like that. That's it, I'm not doing anything else. No effects. So simple, click and play. That's really the essence of this plugin. You will find something to fit your tone. Now, for the bass guitar, typically with my bass tones, I'll have an affected and then I will mix the DI in with that. And that's what I did here. So the bass tone, A nasty sounding bass. Um, I'm playing a little hard. You know what? I don't care. It's slightly out of tune on that first note. I don't really care. The stop section, overdrive two into what is this? A Sans Amp PSA one from the Chris Crummett bass pack. Uh, the cabinet, I didn't touch. Uh, the EQ, uh, I don't think, let's see, uh, the high shelf. I have a high shelf going on at 7.4K. I have the top end boosted basically is what's happening. Uh, the effects section is on, but none of these are on. So basically they're off. Um, let's see, I don't think, yeah. Chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo. I have all those options. I don't have anything on. I can actually just turn this off. But yeah, that's uh, the Sans Amp PSA-1 from the Chris Crummett pack and it sounds awesome.
Now, I will point out that this tuner, you'll see this tuner just going nuts on <laughs> as the DI is playing through it. Uh, I believe this is the same tuner from the Will Putney uh, plugin. The fastest and snappiest tuner I have ever used. It's very, very lovely. The addition of the gate is very, very nice on the input, um, especially at the high gain stuff. Let's go back to, I'm gonna go back to the main guitars. I'm gonna turn the gate off and I'm gonna extend this part just a little bit. And you can hear how much work it's doing. Hear that? But I'm gonna turn it back on. It keeps it tight, but it's not taking away any of the top end or anything like that. It's not coloring. It's just doing what a gate should do. And it's stay out of your way. Really, really cool. Um, this plugin is very, very lightweight. I will say you can have a ton of instances and it's not really taxing on your computer at all. So as far as my final thoughts, I think STL Tones have done a great job in coming up with something new in the amp plug-in and guitar tone plug-in world. I can't wait to see what they come up with next and how they add on and build on this platform. I mean, the world is their oyster as far as this goes. This can really do anything and it's just opened up a whole new world of possibilities. I have really enjoyed using this plugin over the past two weeks I have been home from tour. I love that it's lightweight. I put it on my laptop so I can get really quick, awesome guitar tones when I am writing with the rest of the guys in my band. And it's just very, very convenient, simple and awesome. And there's not really much more I can say about it. I've really, really enjoyed it these last two weeks. All the pickable links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Video's over. I hope it was good. I mean, if it wasn't good, I apologize. But if it was good, you're welcome. <laughs>